One of the most ironic statements ever made by a public speaker was made by Abraham Lincoln. He said, the world will not rem long remember the words that are spoken here today. That's what he said about the Gettysburg Address. He said, nobody's going to remember it. Boy, was he wrong. <laughs> but he said, the test of this speech and my talking to you is whether the experiment of a nation of the people and by the people and for the people will endure. He didn't realize until his second inaugural speech the purpose of the Christian faith in protecting American freedom. Christianity is going to survive without America. But America is not going to survive without Christianity. The experiment of the next four days is not just winning souls, healing the sick, but proving that self-promotion, individual ambition, can be laid at the foot of the cross for God to give birth to a movement that will be the weapon that the rest of American church needs to see. The rest of American church needs to see the power of putting congregations under one tent on a Sunday morning and saying to the world, we are his body. We are his church, and we do love one another. And by this shall all the world know that you are my disciples. Many people claim to want revival in America. Many people claim that they want souls to be saved. But when the moment arrives where you hear three words, and I'm going to tell you why people did not like Charles Finney, because he believed that revival was always available, and the sovereignty camp hated him for it. How dare you say revival is automatic if certain conditions are met? How dare you believe that you can overrule the sovereignty of God who, when he gets in a mood, will pour out his spirit at key times. But here is what Finney believed. Revival doesn't begin with God. It begins with, if my people. God said, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. 99% of all great awakenings die between the first and the second step. Here is the painful truth about our God. If you ask him for revival, he says yes. He'll say it to the small church, the medium church, the large church, the pastor, the leader, the businessman, the grandma, the one that the devil fears the most, by the way, is grandma. <laughs> you give me the world's greatest African missionary he can't pray like grandma, especially if one of her grandbabies is on the line. That's when the tiles of hell get broken off. Now, let me tell you something. In the world that we live in today, 99% of all revivals die between the first and the second step. Step one is when you ask God for revival, because he'll say yes. And then he'll say, if, and that's where they die. If you would rather have revival than church growth. If you would rather have revival than recognition. If you would rather have revival than anyone ever knowing that you were the catalyst to it. If your motive 
can be pure enough, righteous enough, deep enough, you'll get to the second stage. When God tells you the price you will pay to see that awakening. Now, there are many times where a man like me, a man of God or a woman of God, can hide behind success. And the, the cursed tendency of human nature is when you have succeeded is to get enslaved in a formula to sustain that popularity. But I believe that popularity is a special thing. It's a line of credit that God gives you to exercise in the act of telling the truth. There are times where Christ seemed to deliberately sabotage his popularity. When the crowds reached their zenith, he said, except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you cannot be my disciple. And he thinned the herd. The absence of the power in this day is going to be unlocked in a series of verses I'm about to read. But I don't want this to be a four-day meeting. I don't want this to be something in my newsletter that said, oh, we had a lot of people get saved and thank God for that. And a lot of people get healed. I am sick to death of what Satan has done to my nation. I am sick to death of the spirit of woke. I'm tired of God's rainbow being hijacked by the devil. Abraham Lincoln said on this day in Gettysburg, we're going to find out whether that experiment of freedom will survive. Thank God it did. And I believe it was very much because of Lincoln's selfless need. Here's the demon of our day, self-promotion. Self-promotion. Facebook has permitted anybody to call themselves an apostle, even if they've got five disgruntled members. Everybody's a prophet. Everybody is an evangelist. Everybody has got a title. I remember I was sitting at dinner with all these leaders that were talking about what their title. Well, I'm a prophet. The other said, I'm an apostle. And I got another said, I'm a bishop. Nothing wrong with these things, but what was the deal with all these name tags? And so I said, you know what, boys, I'm going to be a knight. I mean, if we're up for selecting and self-identifying, and how can we make fun of a man who thinks he's a girl on a beer can when we call ourselves prophets when we're not and apostles when we're not because not because we were called, but because we self-identify. I believe the day has come for every preacher in America to say, I don't care if you know my name. I don't care if you know what I am. All I want the devil to know is who I am and what I will do when I get the anointing. 